Lesson 8, 1, multiplying monomials. What's a monomial? Well, it's anything being multiplied that has one term. For example, letter A. It's a variable. It's just got one term. Uh, 2x. 3a squared b. However, a monomial is not something being divided. So 1 over x would not be a monomial. A plus B would not be a monomial. What's a constant? Well, a constant is just something that's not a variable. So 4, negative 3, 7, 1, any of those. And the nice thing is a constant is also a monomial. <clears throat> so if I just saw the constant 2, that's a monomial. We'll get into details later, but it's a monomial because it's like saying it's 2 times x to the 0. So we'll come back to that a little bit. So what is x squared times x to the 5th equal to? Well, we add them. When we have a identical base, so we get x to the 7th. Well, what's x squared plus x squared? Well, that's 2x squared. A lot of people get these confused. So what's the best way to remember it? The way I remember it, and if I haven't done exponents in a while, I literally have to stop and think about this. x squared times x to the 5th is like 2x's times 5x's. which is the same as x to the 7th. So it's a simple way to remember it. Strongly recommend it. So some practice. If you want to pause the tape, take a shot at it, go for it. If we have constants in front, we multiply them, and then we deal with the other pieces. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. So those are pretty simple. We're going to make your life a lot more complicated than that, of course. That's what we math teachers, being evil, do. But that's just something to fall back on. Add the exponents if you have the same base. Multiply the constants that are out front. Now, let's put 1 to a power. How do we handle that? Well, now instead of adding, we multiply. We get x to the 6th. How do we remember that? Well, x to the 3rd squared is like x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd. Just like 2 squared is 2 times 2. So x to the 3rd times x to the 3rd, like we just showed, add the exponents, x to the 6th. Again, if you want to pause the video, try these three on your own, see what you get. You do not have to multiply this one out. So this will be 2 to the negative 15th because we're just multiplying them. We'll talk about negative exponents in a little bit. This would be the quantity y plus 2 to the 12th. And for the time being, we're going to leave the negative alone here. And it's negative 6 to the 10th. So, last thing on exponents with monomials, how can we rewrite this? And I say rewrite because it's not necessarily right or wrong. There'll be times we want to factor it, make it look like this. Times we want to distribute it, and that's what we do, we distribute it. And this one, unfortunately, I don't have a trick to remember. You just have to memorize it. Should not use the word distribute too loosely because sometimes it means different things in different math problems. Again, if you want to try this one on your own, before I do it, might not be a bad idea. So we distribute. And 
And negatives can be a hassle. Like I said earlier, I'm just going to leave the negative alone. But now, I'm going to actually distribute to everything. So negative times a negative is a positive, so that's just going to vanish. And that's 36. That's y squared. And all that's to the sixth. We need a calculator at some point here. So we'll keep the one ninth for the time being, and we take that to the sixth. Get a massive number. And we get y to the 12th. Now we have to finish the problem. Divide this by 9. We still get a massive number. x squared just stays alone. And then these two combine, we add the exponents. 12 and 8 is 20. Like I said, things are always going to get a little more complicated. Moving on, dividing monomials. Now, I don't put this in at this point, but you can always assume the denominator is not zero. Because if it were, we'd be breaking the laws of physics and we'd have to go to prison for three light years. It's a terrible thing. So, what do we do? Subtract. Seven minus two is five. How about this one? Well, two minus seven is negative five. We'll change that later, but not right now. But it's just still subtracting. How come? Same thing we showed before. This would actually be x times x times x times x times x over x times x. Two of these are going to cancel, and we're left with five of them. So that's why you subtract. Again, a good thing to remember if you get lost in the middle of a problem. So simple practice. This is 8 to the 6th. And sometimes we want you to multiply it out. Sometimes we don't. Since I haven't put any instructions here, we'll multiply it out. This is negative 3 to the third, pardon me, to the negative third. I'm not going to multiply that out now. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Here's two of them. Invisible 1 over the A there. Subtract A to the fourth, A to the fifth. And here we got distribution again, just like we did last time, but we also distribute to the denominator. 2 to the fourth, P to the eighth. 3 to the 4th. Multiply them out. If you want to practice on your own, go for it. Pause the tape. This one I'm going to cancel first. There's no reason not to. Otherwise my math gets pretty ugly. So top is 1 to the 3rd, which is just 1. Bottom is 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. And x to the 3rd. Done. So, how about x to the 0? Well, that's 1. Just memorize it. But if you can't, it kind of fits in nice with this unit. How do we do x to the 3rd over x to the 3rd? Well, that's x to the 3 minus 3, which is x to the 0. But x to the 3rd over x to the 3rd could just be rewritten as x times x times x over x times x times x. They cancel. Gives you 1. Has to. 
Otherwise, again, we'd be breaking some laws. Now, I told you I'd get to this later, and we're finally getting there. How do we handle negative exponents? Just put them on the bottom. If they're on the top, to make them positive. And we almost always want to write things positive. You can assume that unless you hear differently in a problem. And if they're on the bottom, flip them to the top. You can try these on your own, but I'm going to use them as part of my teaching, so I'll jump right into them. So if it's on the top, put it on the bottom, make it positive. So that means it's b to the third now. It's on the bottom, put it to the top. And c squared doesn't move. Here I can do a little canceling. A on the top should go on the bottom. So let's rewrite. We got a negative. We got a 1. We got a 7. A to the fourth. A squared. B to the 7 over B to the 7. I'll just cancel that. That's going to be a 1. And C should go up top. 4 plus 2 is 6. So we get negative C to the fifth over 7. A to the sixth. A lot of material here. Make sure you attack the practice problems and try them all because that's the best way to learn is by doing. Good luck.